Adams coming from YouTube. Just wanted to give you a shout out today. Uh, thanks for uh, being my subscriber and my friends. I really appreciate it. Um, I have some uh, questions here that uh, I want to talk about today. Uh, a couple people, um, Homestar2112 and uh, Thomas Metal 75 uh, Basically, um, Homestar2112 wanted uh, a little bit of information about the molar technique. He thought uh, I should put some information out on that. So uh, I've got a video right here. Let's go to that right now. Okay, and also uh, Thomas Metal 75 basically wanted uh, a little bit of information about cymbal cracking. Uh, basically what goes on, uh, I've never, I've been playing 30 years and I've never in 30 years have cracked a cymbal yet. Uh, so that's a good record to keep. Uh, remember guys, it's not cool to break cymbals. It doesn't mean you're macho and all that and, you know, hey, I broke a cymbal because in the end, you're going to end up having to buy another one unless you're, you know, a rock star and you get them for free. However, I don't think everybody out there is a rock star that, uh, you know, makes millions of dollars a year and doesn't matter about, you know, cracking cymbals. I, on the other hand, I don't make a lot of money. You know, I teach drum lessons. I play out. I don't make much. But uh, when I do have a cymbal, one of the things, the way I do uh, like to hit the cymbal is kind of either away from it. So either if I'm hitting this way, I'll hit into it that way or away from it like that. And I've got a video to show you, so let's go to that right now on the proper way and the non-proper way to uh, hit a cymbal. Okay, so we're back. Um, basically, if you do get a crack in the cymbal, there are a couple of remedies. Um, there was actually a, a Modern Drummer magazine that just came out. Uh, either Modern Drummer, no, I think it was Drum Magazine that came out with this about cymbal cracking. And basically what they're saying is, is if you get a small crack, uh, maybe about an inch, inch and a half, two inches, um, basically they want you to find a little bit bigger of a drill bit and drill just right at the edge of where the crack stops right there, right where the crack stops, and drill a hole there. What that does, it prevents the cymbal from cracking anymore. So that's one of the remedies that you can do there. The other thing that the way the, uh, the book uh, or the magazine from uh, Drum Magazine said is that to actually wipe out that whole entire crack by, dr by actually cutting with some metal shears a triangle and getting the crack out of there. So you're actually taking a little bit of the symbol away. Um, you know, that's great. What they want to do, the reason why they do that is they don't want the symbol rubbing together where the crack is because with symbol rubbing together and, and that crack, it's going to eventually keep cracking if you don't drill the, like, you know, where I was saying where the hole is. 
So that's very important. Um, I don't like the idea of, of maybe, you know, cutting away too much of the symbol. So, you know, if you want to cut a little bit less, I would say that. Or you could do what I do is get a real a metal file. And once you get a little bit of the shears to cut away from there, just file just a little bit so that the symbol's not rubbing together. And that's, that's the way to remedy symbol cracks, okay? Um, for... For a lot of symbols that have, uh, you know, cracks all over, you know, in every, almost every part of the symbol, uh, again, you just do the same thing for all of it. But after a while, man, I'll tell you, that symbol's had it. You might as well get a new one. If it's something that can't be replaced, well, then, you know, I, I would retire it. So, uh, but that's pr pretty much my take on uh, symbol, show, or symbol uh, uh, cracks and, uh, and how to fix them, okay? Uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about is drum teachers. Uh, I myself have been teaching now. I started when I was 18. Uh, I'm 45, going to be 46 this year. Uh, one thing uh, I've learned when I was taking drum lessons is that it's very, very important to find the right teacher. You know, there's a lot of teachers out there that play really good, and you might think, wow, this guy really knows what he's doing, but they don't teach well. And then there's the other aspect of it. There are guys that teach really well, but they can't show you anything. They can't show you, a, you know, a Neil Peart fill or a John Bonham fill. And, you know, it's great to do all the stuff from the books and stuff. And I, for one, I love reading. Uh, reading is very important. If you don't know how to read, again, find yourself a really good drum teacher that can read, but at the same time give you guys some fun. You know, um, when I teach drum lessons, I'm not all about just rudiments and reading and, you know, having to do something very marching military style. I do a little bit of that, and then I also do songs too because it's fun. I mean, that's the whole point we get into drums is we want to be able to play a song. And I've got a lot of students that, you know, they enjoy playing songs, and, you know, the work and stuff, that's kind of like, you know, vegetables. you got to take your vegetables, but you got to, you know, be able to have some dessert, too, with it. So I would say, you know, it's very important to find the right teacher that can do both, that can perform really well and he knows the stuff, but yet he can sit there and really have patience. Some teachers don't have patience with their students, uh, and that's a real bad sign right there. If a teacher doesn't have patience with you and he's given up on you, you know, I, I don't go for that. I think everybody has a certain level that they can get into. Not everybody is at the same level, you know, don't get me wrong, but I think it's really important to, you know, have that fundamental teacher to sit down with you and show you the ropes and show you how notes go and what they do and why they play the way they play and the rhythms and stuff. And then start to incorporate that stuff around the drum set. So that's kind of my teaching philosophy there. Uh, if you guys have any other questions about, you know, drum teachers or you had a certain, you know, teacher that just, you know, was really great or somebody that was really bad, you know, uh, let me know about it. I'd like to hear about it and uh, maybe I can have some other, you know, uh, up and coming videos talking about drum teachers and different things like that. I had, when I was taking lessons, I took from about four, four or five different drum teachers. It's been so long now, but... Uh, uh, one of the, the most uh, memorable drum teachers I had was a guy by the name of uh, Gene Stewart. And uh, he taught, uh, you know, he was a jazz guy, and, you know, he, he, was, really, um, he was really patient with me, you know. Uh, there was times where I would leave, you know, the drum room just crying because I couldn't get some of the stuff or I didn't understand the certain notes and stuff. So, you know, let make sure a teacher is really, you know, has got a lot of, you know, special time with you. He'll take the extra, he'll go the extra mile for you. And, uh, and th that I really think is an important, you know, aspect of a teacher that they don't want to just give up on you and throw their hands up and say, well, you're never going to play drums. That's, that's the worst thing I, I, you know, I'd like to hear about, uh, from you guys. But, you know, if you have any stories or any comments, you know, feel free to leave them and we'll see you guys real soon. Until then, take care, keep rocking. We'll see you next time.